Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So if this is your first time on this channel, we talk about makeup, weight loss, lifestyle, and today we are going to be discussing menopause. Um, if you are a current subscriber, then you know that I suffer with hot flashes and I've been in perimenopause for about the last two years and it's something that's, I would say, near and dear to my heart now because this is something that um, it's impacting my daily life. So, yeah. so I have been doing some research on it and um, yeah, it. Um, I love being a woman, don't get me wrong, but man, this right here is just... And yeah, because I have to have the fan off so that I can film, and I hope this audio is coming out okay, you will probably see me with my handy dandy fan. <laughs> I'm going to have to name her. But yeah, so perimenopause is basically what happens before our bodies go into full menopause. Um, it basically includes... Um, well, menopause being 12 months of no period. So perimenopause is your body basically adjusting and preparing not to have a period. So you may start off with some irregular periods uh, where they're far apart or um, they're like super close together um, along with some things that I suffer with like on a daily basis. And that is the hot flashes. That is the night sweats. Um, also, there are some other things that can happen, and I've been experiencing some new things, and that is like acne, like adult acne. I've been finding that I'm breaking out on my jaw and my chin, and <laughs> it's just driving me crazy. It's just driving me crazy. Um, so perimenopause, um, it can start in your late 30s, go into your early 40s, um, and depending on other factors that may come into play. So for me, I did have a hysterectomy back in 2014. I think I was 38 years old. And a few years after that, I started noticing just some slight changes in terms of um, getting warm, but you know, I could have a warm spell. It wasn't even a hot flash. It was a warm spell, but it was like far few in between, like maybe once every few months. Not that it was very noticeable. I'm able to kind of pinpoint it now because obviously hindsight is 2020. So yeah, late thirties, um, early forties. Um, again, I talked about the irregular periods. Um, another thing that started happening was that I was having increased anxiety and depression. Um, you basically feel like you're losing your mind. Um, I was prescribed some medication with my doctor to kind of help with that. But at the time, again, I didn't know that that's what I was dealing with. But yeah, just like extreme anxiety, um, heart palpitations, um, joint pain, like I've got a list because again, brain fog, I'll get brain fog so I have to make myself a list. Um, heart palpitations and then also you'll find yourself getting UTIs, like what? I had one UTI and that was in my late 20s and now I'm in my mid to late 40s and I got one I think one, a year ago and I was like what what is this this is this is not normal like what is not normal for me anyway um, but yeah so finding out doing my research that is something that can absolutely happen and then of course you get your mood swings um, so yeah you feel like you're going crazy you you know your parents your kids your partner everybody probably think you're losing your mind um, and then, of course, you've got that middle age spread. So um, if you've not gone through my channels, I've talked about like losing weight and how it became, um, well, COVID weight, but how it became to start a weight loss journey on my channel because back in my 20s and 30s, obviously, you know, you're, you're younger, um, you can exercise, get the weight off, stop eating, cut back, do a little exercise and the weight comes off. This... This was some. This was this was like some crazy stuff because the weight was not moving, and I mean this is with exercising, with eating healthy, with just everything that I could think of in the book. Keto. I, mean, I did keto, and I was like religious about the keto. I started gaining weight on keto. I'm like, what? My body was just fighting full fledged against me. So basically, a lot of this happens because we're losing estrogen. And obviously, estrogen is a hormone that we need in our body and it helps to regulate our moods. I mean, even if things like um, we talked about the middle age 
middle age. Oh my God, middle age? Well, I mean, I am. You talk about middle age, uh, weight gain, and then gaining weight around our middle area. So you start to, you know, you see that you got a belly now where you never maybe had a belly. I mean, it may be a fupa, but then the belly is like higher than a fupa. And I'm like, why is a big beer belly like I'm... <laughs> I got to drink bread. I know. It was just crazy. Um, so that was like, I mean, you're, you're, you kind of take a hit to your self-confidence, right? You take a hit and it's like, what is happening? You know how you can always like pose or something. It's like, I can always find a good angle. But then after a while, you can't even find a good angle because everything is just going haywire. I mean, you're, you're shedding your hair, you're losing your hair, your hair is thin. I mean, just all sorts of things are happening to your body. And I'm just here to let you know, you're not by yourself. And then what happens, what, what has happened with me is that, you know, I've got friends that are a little bit older than me, but none of them were having the issues that I am having. And so that was becoming like very frustrating. So, um, my mom passed some years back. And so we never really got a chance to talk about, you know, her experiences because, um, they say that, you know, your whenever your mom started her, you know, perimenopause, you may follow suit. So, you know, I wish she was here so I can kind of talk to her about those sorts of things. But, you know, there's a community out there and everybody's like really helpful. So um, and there's been people in the comments talking, you know, saying, hey, you're like me, like we're twins. I'm like, oh, my God, this is so good to hear. You know, not that we want everybody to have it, but like somebody that can like you, you get it, like like you get it. You get it. Yes. Um, what else? Let's see. Oh. Sometimes you can also experience painful sex, and because it's painful, that's because we are um, losing lubrication in our vaginal area. Again, this is due to a loss of estrogen. Um, another thing that I noticed was bloating, like the bloating. Oh my God, I don't care what you take, Tums or gas sex, like nothing was really helping. But I will, well, I'll talk about that at the end, what I did to combat the bloating, because I've just recently started taking some things that um, really helped me with that. So um, I'll give some tips to that towards the end. Um, another thing is the water retention. So um, like our bodies will retain water because like in our fat cells and things like that, there's estrogen in there and your body really doesn't want to let that go. Um, so it starts to hold on to everything, to the fat, to the water, to everything. And it's very annoying. Then you'll find like itchy skin. Like I find myself, my arms like always itching. I'm like, I'm just steady lathering on, um, slathering on moisturizer and lotions and things like that. And that was just like, you know, all these random things happen and you don't really realize it until you start researching and you realize, man, all this stuff is like coming together. It's like, <laughs> you know, you just kind of want to do that. Right. Um, another thing is dry skin. So you'll find that your skin, like even if you're putting it on, you know, your skin is drying out more and more and more. Um, and then another big thing is something I've really been struggling with is the insomnia, the insomnia. Like I've never had an issue with going to bed. It was almost like, okay, honey, you got anything you want to talk about? Anything you want to do? <laughs> Um, because if so, you need to let me know now because I'm going to be sleep in 2.2 seconds because that's all it took, just me closing my eyes and then I'm out. But now, no, mm -mm. I'm up, I can't sleep, I'm just tossing and turning because then I'm getting hot, then I'm cold, then I'm hot, then I'm cold. You know, it's just, it is just the worst. Um, and then also, uh, I think I did, I hope I talked about the fatigue, just, you just, sluggish you're just tired and you get bursts of energy so um yeah those are things that has just really um i want to say reduced the quality of life for me um and the crazy part about it is that this can last upwards of 10 years yeah 10 years yes 10 years i almost fell out of my chair when i started reading about that i'm like lord why like why why, 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 why is it like this? But luckily there are some things that you and I can do. So there is HRT, which is hormone replacement therapy. Um, there's a patch and they basically are giving you like spurts of estrogen and it kind of helps to alleviate your symptoms and things like that. So that's something that you can talk to your doctor about. Um, me, myself, I'm not taking hormone replacement therapy only um, because um, I am prone to blood clots. I had had blood clots in the past and um, that's not something that would 
be good for me, um, at least from what I've been studying and what my doctor has told me in the past. So if there's something new that has come out, I'm not fully aware of it. But as I'm, for now, I'm not taking any hormone replacement therapy. Um, what I am doing, I am taking um, pr um, probi see the brain fog? <laughs> probiotics, uh, and that has helped significantly with the bloating. Uh, I am staying hydrated. Um, I limit my alcohol intake because, oh my God, like too much alcohol and you will feel hot and cold at the exact same time. Like your body is like all, it's really all over the place. I really limit uh, my alcohol. I really try to work on um, getting healthy fats, omega-3s, like those kind of vitamins in my system. Um, again, talks about staying hydrated. Obviously, I'm going to keep a fan on hand at all times in the ceiling box fan, handy fans, just I'm just gonna try to make sure that I'm dressing in layers um, and trying to stay cool. Um, what else? Um, I think that is really it. Um, let me know in the comments um, what your experience has been with, um, with perimenopause and um, yeah. Now I do know that there are some tests that they can take. Um, like once, like so for me, I don't have a uterus, so I think there's some blood work that I can take and then it kind of let me know if I'm in perimenopause. But I don't really need blood work to tell me. I mean, I know exactly what it is because if you have a period, you really can't, if you still have periods, you really can't do that because your hum, your hormones fluctuate every month and it's hard to get an accurate reading from month to month. So that kind of makes it a little wonky there. Um, basically, they can just kind of look at your hormones and look at those readings and tell whether or not you're, I mean, it's some science and math involved and I'm, that's just not fine. I'm just a little lady on the internet. <laughs> but yeah, that is pretty much it. I just wanted to come in and um, just kind of let you guys know I'm here. If you're struggling, you are not alone. Um, I'm going to keep my ear to the internet. So something that will help us. Um, yeah, I'll just keep looking and keep hoping and wishing and praying um, that these um, symptoms really, you know, just trying to live with it. I'm not going to say they're eventually, you know, I hope that they ease up. But for now, just trying to stay positive and, you know, I joke about it. My husband calls me flame. Like, that is not right. That is not right. Torch. Really? You know, it ain't right. But yeah, as always, thank you guys so much for coming to my channel. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.